Hey Bon Beanie, welcome to episode two of the Cruise Geeks Fantastic Guide to Snorkeling. Today we're talking about masks. So which mask is right for you? Today's market, there are a lot of different styles of masks and it's hard to tell which mask is going to suit you best. In this video, we're going to go over some of the pluses and minuses of different styles of masks and also help you make that decision whether you should buy or rent and if you are buying, make sure you get one that's right for you. Let me just say this, if you are going to buy a mask, I recommend that you go to a, a local dive shop if that's an option for you. Go to a local dive shop, definitely you want to get a good quality mask. In my opinion, this is the most important part of gear for snorkeling, and this is where your money should go. You can save money on fins, you can save money on a snorkel. If you're going to buy snorkel gear, don't cheap out on your mask. You're going to save money if you cheap out, but your mask is not going to give you as good of an experience. It's going to leak, it's going to get dry and rigid, and it's not going to be as comfortable, and it's just not going to last as long. You're going to get for maybe two times the price, maybe three times the price, depending on your taste in masks, you're going to get a mask that could last you over a decade if you take care of it. It's going to be super comfortable, and it's going to give you a much, much better experience. So when you go to buy a mask, you want to make sure that it fits. The fit is the most important thing of the mask. If it doesn't fit, you're going to get water in your eyes, you're going to get water in your nose. It's not good. So you got to make sure it fits. Well, how do you know it fits? Here's how you know. You go to the dive shop, you find a mask that you like. This one is actually not my mask, so we'll see if it fits. You take your glasses off, if you wear glasses. You take it, you're going to put the mask up to your face, you're going to inhale, and while you're inhaling, the mask should not fall off. This, of course, is with the strap off. So let's see if this mask fits me. Ready? Put it on my face. Okay, now if I don't inhale, it's going to fall off. See that? I don't inhale, falls off. But if I put it up to my face and inhale, we'll see if it fits. I can't actually talk while I inhale. But you see, this mask is a good fit for me. So, uh, so that's how you tell if a mask fits. Now, if you are getting a full face mask, like this one, it's the same thing, only you can inhale through your mouth or your nose, okay? But you're looking, you're looking for the same thing. Put it up to your face, breathe in, it should stay, it should stay, okay? Without the strap on there, without the strap on, that's the important part. Now the next thing I think you should consider when buying a mask is comfort. Uh, you want one that fits, but you want it to be comfortable as well. And that's one of the perks of getting a mask that is a little bit more expensive. You're going to get a higher quality of material. Uh, a good mask like this one, this is kind of a standard, not too expensive mask. Um, it's got this double lip of silicone. It's a pretty comfortable mask. You know, you're not going to be having too many issues with that. But if you want to have more comfort, then consider something like these new style uh, rimless masks. That's what both of these are kind of very similar. Uh, really soft material here, super comfortable, but you're going to spend more money to get these kind of qualities. How long and how often do you snorkel? These are things to think about with this particular option. If you're like me, and when you go snorkeling, you might be out in the water for six hours at a time, you want a comfortable mask. But if you're only going to be in there for 20 minutes, you're not going to notice much difference. Now, with these full face masks, I have not been able to use one yet, but um, I have been told by people who have used them that these are super comfortable as well. Now that you know how to tell if a mask fits and you know to look for that comfort factor, how do you choose which mask is right for you? There's so many designs out there. Which one is going to work for you? Let's look at all these masks. Let's look at their pluses and minuses. Let's start with this one. This is kind of a basic old school dive or snorkeling mask here. Um, it's basically clear silicone. It's got the single pane window in the front and this particular model has side windows on it as well. So what are the advantages of this mask? Well, this is going to be one of your least expensive masks. You can probably get one of a decent quality for anywhere from maybe 40, 50 bucks 
on up to about 60 or 70 bucks is probably what you're looking for uh, looking at for this style of mask and and this particular one is a single lens mask now you will see them where this is split and you have two different lenses well who wants that people that wear glasses can get this mask and actually get prescription lenses right in here so if you wear glasses and you need them for distance or you just really need them to see well this is an option for you. Now, most people I know that wear glasses and need the glasses, they will wear contacts while they are scuba diving or they're snorkeling. And this is, this is easier to do these days if you're comfortable with contacts because contacts are not as expensive as they once were and usually people have disposable ones anyway. So it's usually a pretty good option. It used to be kind of risky to swim with your contacts in. Now, some other features of this mask are the side panel which does give you a little bit more visibility although to be honest with you for me i don't really notice anything this doesn't help me with my vision when i'm using this style of mask so uh try it on in the dive shop this is another reason to go to the store and try it on and see if it makes a difference for you some people like this feature some people it doesn't really matter for me not a big deal now, you've also got kind of plain straps. You can tell this mask is a little old. And you can see the difference in quality of the silicone on the skirt of this mask and the strap. This is silicone on the strap is not as high quality and it's started to get yellow over the years where this is still pretty clear because it's a good quality silicone. This particular mask has one of these on here. This is, this is gonna be really nice because it's gonna help to put your mask on. It's gonna slide right over your head. If you have long hair, you're not gonna get tangled in your hair. Um, I don't really have that issue, but uh, I still like these because it does make it easier to slide right on and off. And I'll tell you another reason to get one of these if you're a bald guy like myself is this is sunscreen right here, my friends. This is going to protect your head from the sun. When you're snorkeling, uh, guess what? Your head is super exposed to the sun right on top of that very reflective water. This will help you out. So, so this is a pretty good mask for inexpensive, good quality, basic mask. Now it does have a pretty high volume of air in here. Now what does that mean? It means that when you swim underwater, you the air that's in here is going to compress from the pressure around it. Uh, the biggest difference, change difference, is when you hit about between 10 and 30 feet. After that, it's, it's less. But uh, most people notice that even in a swimming pool. You go into water, your ears start to hurt. Uh, this mask is gonna suck to your face. How do you deal with that? You exhale into the mask. Now that works pretty well if you're scuba diving, no big deal, because you've got an air source. Snooping, no big deal. But if you are snorkeling and you're relying on that one breath of air to swim underwater, do you want to waste it putting it in here? And also it's it's going to take a little bit more effort to do that. So if you're a person that likes to swim underwater a lot and go fairly deep, and by deep for this I'm talking like 15, 20 feet, uh, that's something you might want to consider. Although, let me say this, this is the type of mask that I used for years and years and it never really bothered me too much. I do use a lower volume mask these days. It does help, but it's not it's not going to make or break my purchase. So, uh, so this is a pretty cool mask for that. Now, are there any other disadvantages of this particular mask? One disadvantage is that some people that have a larger nose uh, will say that there's less nose room here. It's got to get stuck on this little piece and it can be a little less comfortable. That and the high volume are the only things and those are pretty minor things to complain about. This is a pretty good mask. This is a pretty good option for you if you're looking for a first mask and you're doing just basic regular snorkeling. Now let's look at the kind of mask that I use these days and that is going to be these frameless masks. These are both my masks that I use and um, I just have two of them. Uh, one's a backup basically but you see this one has that thing that helps it to slide on better um, and this one does not. So I usually will use this mask. Lately it's also got a different type of strap. It's like a nylon strap. Doesn't That really doesn't mean anything to me. I like both these straps fine. I have had a mask in the past that had one of these built in and you could pull it to tighten it. That was a really nice feature but it's not a feature that I see very often. The disadvantage to that is if your mask strap breaks on that mask it's harder and more expensive to replace where these are pretty inexpensive. Usually I carry one or two of these extra with me when I go just in case these break. Doesn't happen very often but you know better safe than sorry because it could happen to you. So the frameless mask is, is kind of a newer type of mask. Um, it does 
Uh, it does have similar qualities to the regular standard mask here, but the difference is that it's a much lower volume here. So there's less air in this mask. This is a, a mask, this is the type of mask that most free divers are gonna choose, and that's why I choose it, because I like to do a lot of free diving. I like to swim 30, 40 feet underwater, and having a low volume is gonna really make a difference um, for those super deep dives. Not Like I said, it's not the end of the world if you don't have this, but it does help and it's a cool mask. Now these masks are going to be a little more expensive because they are made with this softer, higher quality material and because of the fact that they're frameless. So I think this mask ran me a little over $100 uh, as opposed to one of these that's probably going to be, like I said, most of these I would say are in the $50, $60 range. You might get a $70 one, maybe find one on sale for $40 bucks or something like that. These you're looking at $100 to $200, probably closer to the $100 mark. Depends on the brand, depends on the style, depends on the sale that you find. Uh, but this is a good mask. Now, I will tell you the disadvantage to this mask is when you get a mask, either this type or this type, the first thing that you have to do when you get it is you have to get rid of this coating. So these masks come with this sort of coating that coats the inside and outside of the, of the lens and you can't see it it's a clear coating it's from the factory process and when you swim with it what it does is it prevents you from being able to defog your mask so how do you get rid of it well you can use toothpaste as long as it's like a paste and not a gel cause it's got a little bit of grit in it or you can buy a product like um, this mask scrub product right here. There's different brands. This is a, a pretty popular one. And this is basically just like toothpaste. It's got grit in it. It's not so hard it's gonna scratch the, the lens, but it is gonna help to get that off. And what you do is you put it in there, you rub it around with a pretty significant amount of pressure with your fingers, not too crazy, and then you're gonna just rinse it out. And with a mask like this, if I do that one time, that's usually it. I'm good to go. But when I first bought these masks, especially this one is the one I got first. Um, actually, I take that back. This mask is the one I got first. I must have gone through that process. I used toothpaste at first because that's what I'd always used. That didn't do it. So I bought the scrub. That's why I own that scrub. And I did that three or four times. That didn't do it. It took probably about eight or nine times of scrubbing this sucker down. Something in the process of these frameless masks makes that that coating go on there a little bit harder to get off so uh, keep that in mind if you get a frameless mask that is a disadvantage but once you get it off of there then you're fine some people have used um, lighters to burn it away um, I did try that with this one it didn't damage it but it was it was super nerve-wracking and I don't know if it helped it probably did but uh, you know putting a flame to my mask it could have melted the mask and that would have been it. So uh, use your judgment there. But I think that scrubbing over and over again, that's really the key. Now, a popular style of mask that is out now is the full face mask right here. Now this mask is the mask choice of my wife and my mom, and a lot of people like this style of mask. Okay, we're gonna talk about snorkels in another episode, but this one is built in, so we'll bring this back up when we get to the snorkel episode. I wanna focus on this as a mask. So this is truly a mask. It goes over your whole face. And the reason people like this is it has an awesome field of view. So it's just got a lot of, of area to look through here. But the other thing that they really like about it is that you breathe through your nose or your mouth. So you can breathe through either one and you're gonna be fine. That's a big advantage of this mask. Now it's got a purge valve down here, which is a feature you can get on these types of masks as well. The purge goes here and what it does is if you get water in your mask, you can push the mask to your face and exhale and it'll blow that water out. Uh, there are other strategies that I think work better, but, um, but for this, a purge is necessary because you may get more water in there and it's just gonna drain right out through this purge valve. This works really well. When you lift your head out of the water, the water comes right out of there. I've seen it work, I haven't used it. The reason I haven't used it is one of the reasons why I don't like this mask. It doesn't work if you've got a beard. All right, it won't work if you have a, a goatee, if you have a beard. This mask isn't gonna work because you're not gonna be able to get a seal around where that hair is. Okay, now you go, well, wait a minute, Matt. Don't you have to get a seal um, right here with, uh, with the old mustache there? Well, yes, you do. And uh, when I don't shave my mustache and I scuba dive or I free dive, I get water in my mask and I have to clear it constantly. But it's not 
too bad. Now I will say that you will see in this video series probably, I will shave this off because I'm going to be doing some free diving soon and um, when I'm scuba diving it's fine, I can deal with a little bit of water leak, but when I'm free diving that pressure, that water shoots in, it goes up into my sinuses and causes sinus infections. I don't want to go there. So uh, one solution to that, it's not going to work for, for this guy, but it might work if you really don't want to shave that stash and you want to do some free diving or scuba diving, keep that water out. I've tried this. This is the Trident Mask Seal, and what it is is basically, it is like, um, it's basically like Vaseline type stuff. You just coat this on your mustache and it makes a seal so that you don't leak water when you're swimming. Now this does work, okay? It does work. I tried it on my last time out snorkeling. Um, the problem is it's not super cheap and you got to use a lot of it. The first time I put it on it didn't work. Then I glopped a lot more on. It worked better. Every time you take your mask off and put it back on it's going to get rid of some of it. So if you're doing that a lot you're going to have to keep reapplying. Um, you, some people will use Vaseline which is cheaper but Vaseline will deteriorate the silicone of your mask. So I don't recommend that you do that. Um, invest in some of this if you don't want to shave the stash. Now for this mask, most people that, that like it, they don't have facial hair. <laughs> so it's not an issue. If you do have a mustache, they'd probably be okay with just a mustache with this one. So Now the other disadvantage to this type of mask is that you can't swim underwater very well. I, I see people go underwater with these three, four, five feet after that, you're going to have problems. One, uh, the amount of air in this mask is significant. It's going to suck on your face like a face hugger from the movie Alien. It's not going to be comfortable at all. Okay. The second problem is that when you swim underwater and you get that build up in your ears, we're going to talk about this in our techniques thing, but um, what, what you need to do to solve that is most people will pitch their nose and exhale and it pops and clears and equalizes the air pressure in your ear canals and stuff. So you can't pinch your nose with this design. Okay? It doesn't it doesn't work that way. So um, if you're going to swim underwater very deep, more than a few feet, this is not going to work well. The other problem is this is going to, I mean, think about if you take something filled with air and you put it in the water, what does it do? It floats. So you're going to be fighting to keep your head underwater. It's just going to, if you like to swim underwater, don't get this mask. Okay. If you like to stay at the surface, this is a great mask. Uh, this is a wonderful mask for beginners who want to stay at the surface who aren't super comfortable. It's a great option. So should you buy a mask or should you rent a mask? Well, it's just going to depend, but I will say this. If you're going to buy any snorkel gear, this is what you want to buy. You don't need just to buy a snorkel or fins buy the mask and buy a good one if that's all you can afford or that's all you want. They're easy to pack so if you're going on vacation you can throw them in a bag. Not a lot of space required. Uh, this one takes a little more space. This does come off though so it does pack up. Not, It's not too bad. It's really not bad. Um, but definitely this is what you want to buy. So should you buy? Well here's the thing. If you rent a mask there's a good chance it's not going to fit there's a good chance it's not going to be a very high quality mask and not going to be comfortable. There's a good chance that it's going to leak. There's a good chance that it's going to fog up. There is a good chance that you're not going to have as good of an experience. So in my opinion, should you buy a mask unless you're only planning on snorkeling like once or twice, maybe you're on a cruise, you're like, I'm going to snorkel, but then that's it. I'm never going to snorkel again. I only snorkel once every five years maybe just suck it up and, and rent a mask. But if you are somebody that is going to snorkel once or twice a year or more, I'd say it's worth the investment. It's going to cost you usually, if unless you're on an excursion that includes it, it's going to cost you 10 to $15 to rent gear. How many times do you do that before you've actually paid for your own gear? Now you may still have to pay that if you don't get a fins and a snorkel, but the mask is where I would say consider investing in the mask. Well, that's going to wrap it up for episode two of the Cruise Geeks Fantastic Guide to Snorkeling. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, you know, all that stuff. But let us know. That's the important thing. Let us know that you're enjoying this video. You want to see more. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you want to add to the conversation, comment below. Until the next episode, have a fantastic day. We'll see you later. <laughs>